My name is Vesna Karapetrova and we're here today at Canadian Macedonian Place on uh, Monday, February 19, 2018 to interview Mr. Paul Kiriakou for the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society. Welcome uh, Mr. Paul Kiriakou and thank you for sharing your story for the archives of our Canadian Macedonian Historical Society. Tell us, where and when were you born? I was born in Bainsan, 1940, in January 29. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us who your parents were and where they were born. Both of my parents, no, actually, one of my parents was born in Bainsan, and uh, my mom was born in Patele, which is about 15 kilometers mm -hmm. from Bainsan. Do you remember uh, estimates of when they were born, maybe? My father was born in uh, 1910. Mm -hmm. I think my mom was a few years uh, older than my that was second marriage for my father. Uh -huh. And the name of your father? And and your George mm -hmm. and my mom, Gutsa. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, do you have any siblings, brothers and sisters? Yes, we have four brothers. Uh, Zile, Tiro, Pavle, Nace. Mm -hmm. And uh, where were they born? They were all born in uh, Bansa. They were all born, all born in Bansa. Bansa. Do you know any estimates of their uh, approximate year when they were born? Well, we were born uh, two years uh, apart, uh, 28, uh, no, 40, 48, 40 who, who, and... Who? Yeah, who was born in 48? Uh, and actually, 39 was my older brother. Name? And Sile. Sile was born in 39. And 39? the second brother, two years after what uh, comes uh, 20, 28, actually, in nine months. Then I was born in And the fourth, what's his name? Uh, Tiro. Tilo? Tire, Tire. 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 And I was born in, uh, of course, uh, in uh, 1940. And my brother was 1944, Natsa, the, the, the youngest. Uh, Natsa was the youngest. Uh, the youngest, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, were they all born in Banitsa? Yes, they were all born mm -hmm. in Banitsa. Now, how about your grandparents and your, uh, where were they born? My grandparents, both of them, they were born in Banitsa. And what, what are their names? Uh, Lipe and uh, Sofia. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know approximately when they may have been born? Uh, that I don't know, but it must be in the in late 1800 because uh, mm -hmm. my, my grandfather by 19... 40, you know, 55, and he was 75 years. Must have born in uh, late uh, 1800. And where were they born? In, in Banitsa. Banitsa as Bansa, well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about your extended family, aunts and uncles? Uh, where do you think they were born? Well, aunt, uh, uh, my father, that uh, two, two, there are two brothers and a sister. Mm -hmm. The sister, she died very young, of course, from a sickness. Mm -hmm. And two of his brother, one uh, got killed in the partisans, and the other one he wound up in the civil war in Poland. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you want to hear this story. In Poland, my father, my uncle, father, a son, nobody knew other than me. A son wrote a letter to the Polish uh, Red Cross who was looking for his father, and the letter came to me just like that because of the same name. And then I kept it for 25 years secret. I communicated to that father about uh, five years ago and now when I met him in, in Austria. So you saw him. And what is his name? So this is a Bog cousin Bog of yours. Bogdan uh, Mismilovsky was his uh, mother's name. He does not Kiriakou. Uh -huh. I have pictures in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. that's an yeah. amazing story too. And uh, now, Paul, can you, uh, how old were you uh, when you left your village? I, I didn't finish about my grandfather as a little story. Sorry, yes, yes you uh, can con okay. yes. My grandfather immigrated to the United States in the, in the 20s, 1920s. Mm -hmm. And he was, he, was, uh, he was there for almost uh, in 1936, but he used to come and pregnant my, my grandma and go back and back and forth. And, uh, and where in the United States? We are in Canton, Ohio. So he came to Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. His brother was there in 1908. Mm -hmm. He never went back to the Macedonia to see his other brother. There are three brothers, though, I think, like that. 
So there is actually all the papers. I brought, uh, his son brought them here, and I called Toronto Sun, and they're welcome in the airport, and there's uh, two brothers, they haven't seen him for 70 years. They brought, seven he, zero. Seven, seven, seven zero. zero. Because he stayed in the yeah, uh, United actually, States. Actually, I do have to ride up there and the mm -hmm. thing like that. And uh, his, uh, his sister is married, of course, in Vanitsa to thing like that and mm -hmm. that's all that's all this is from your father's from side my, from my father's side uh-huh and you have a nice picture here is, is uh, does this include some uh, people from uh, your family yes uh, that's most all my family there not not my uh, my uncle something just my my entire family my brothers and uh, my sister-in-law and few relatives okay so your uh, they they include your brothers and your yes all my brothers there and, uh, do you want to point to them and tell us who that's, they are? That's my seal there. Oops, oops. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it like this. Okay, that's one of my brother, my father, mm -hmm. my gr my grandfather, my grandma, and that's my other brother. And this is the father, which is his son. After seventy years, they saw that's my my father, my grandfather's brother. Mm -hmm. That that one. And uh, that's uh, just uh, cousins, nothing okay. like that. And that's my aunt, my mom's sister, which is from Patele. Now we can talk about, uh, you can tell us about what you remember from your village uh, as you were growing up as a boy. As my personal? Yes. Okay, uh, as a young man, because I say as my grandfather, uh -huh. he had a vision on me. Mm -hmm. My father wanted to make me a shepherd. And my grandfather says, we're going to send this young fellow to learn the trade. Mm -hmm. But that before I go to the business, uh, as a seven years old, as a seven years old, one morning, the monarch of a sister government, they came and picked them up from our homes, many, many families, not only us. We went to the center of town. So the monarchy's government called the whole the, the whole host, village the, the whole, because there was a military thing like they were they were ruling anything like that. So this was 1947. 1947. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they we, so we regrouped in the center of the town, and then they chase us just like they they got the, the ships out of the out of the town. So when out of the town, as soon as she came outside of the town, the the two policemen sit inside one inside and they start playing with the machine guns on top of us, not on us, to scare us not to, not to come back. So as soon as we went further up in the mountains, they came with a heavy authority, so they still can scare us not to come back. And in the mountains, we met about maybe four or five different villages, all the people that's been ch chased away. So we, we went to Neveska. The Neveska is the border close to Albanian in the Republic of Macedonia, right in that uh, corner there. Of course, my uncle was the head of the partisans there. He welcomed us And there. what was his name? Uh, Mitze, Mitze Nidelkov, mm -hmm. yes, have a thing like that. And uh, he's, we stayed, people which stayed in other relatives, they passed the Albanian border and that's where they went to Yugoslavia and they dispersed them all over the, uh, the communist countries, whatever, yes. Iron Curtain. And as my uncle, because he had a connection in the Vanitsa, he sent some message to my older brother. My older brother, they didn't know, he was milking the, 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 cows. the, the cows. They didn't know, they, whoever they're going to grab, they didn't care who's going to be, because we were four brothers, but only took uh, three of us, one returned back, you know. And uh, he came and uh, brought us back, secretly in the town. And my, my grandmother went to his brother because they, they know the 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 call them, uh, the, the, policeman. the policeman. They're gonna come and look for her. Mm -hmm. Finally, somebody told him because she she's with her brother, and they took my my grandma. And they sent them back towards the Republic of Macedonia. They sent your grandmother they, back, they're back to Macedonia. But somehow my uncle find her again. She returned her back. Mm -hmm. My father and my grandfather, the the the, the fascist. Uh, we have to be careful. They're both Greeks. The, the partisans are Greeks, the uh, Democrats, and the, 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 the fascists are Greeks, but they fight each other. Mm -hmm. 
And my grandfather and my father, they wanted to send them to jails in uh, one of the Asian islands. So both your father and, and your... My grandfather. Grandfather. And they because they don't want to send a force to the partisans, uh, the adults, so they can go, thing like that. So then after a while, my grandfather, first they, they came, I think, like that. then the war finished about uh, 1949. Sorry, so you both your grandfather and his my father you and your father were sent to the islands and many other venture not only the, many others they, 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 which is they, they had them a little like a communist side. they thought they were, they were communists, communists so that's why they that's sent what, them so because the partisan is to they come every night at the, at the villages they can they could grab anybody they can get mm -hmm. women men horses anything just to and they to hide underneath some or so but somehow and the, uh, the the fascist government at that time they used to take them in the in the islands so 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 they wouldn't run away and get with the partisans. With the partisans. So they they uh, how long was your father there? My father with, twi and twice twice went once for two years one mm -hmm. for uh, and my and my, uh, my with your grandfather. Uh, actually, his uh, brother of my grandfather was two so, together. Yes. He was a literary, he didn't know how to write and read, and he says, you, you sign here because you're not going to uh, do uh, the company with a, because he had a son partisan too. Mm -hmm. And he signed, they send him. Mm -hmm. And because if you sign, they go to the authorities who, who for example, uh, uh, Ilo signed because you're, you're so-and-so. And they can come and kill you because he signed. They because sign, they, they signed in a, what bla in a what, blank. Yes. And on the news, as well, then the other one says he signs that that's why the killing was many killing because he says he, uh, Paul says you're partisan, I mean a communist, and the other one communist, and my grandfather did not sign, that's why they kept me longer. So your father didn't sign the paper? Then, uh, my grandfather. And then he came, um, your, gra your grandfather didn't sign the paper, so they kept him longer they in, the him, yeah, in the islands. Whereas the other one, they let him go. Let him, because, because as soon as you sign, you think you're not going to communicate with a uh, communist thing like that. Uh, but if they catch you, do, then you. Then you're really you, gone. You're really gone. Okay, so then, uh, so your father survived that? Yes. He came back, yes. and then. Well, then things are uh, always getting better because we are an agricultural family. Mm -hmm. We are the well to do, not. Mm -hmm. Rich, but we are thin, but, but still we had it uh, in the red thing to us. If you like to uh, uh, anything, if you like to have a business or something, they have a, they they still and we are written in the red marks whatever they come. So they, they they had you flagged red that flag. you were yeah. sympathizers. Yeah, yeah. And they don't trust you. They didn't I mean, trust they you, trust right? It, yeah. Yeah, so how was your childhood, uh, My childhood. Paul? <clears throat> uh, you went to school when you were okay. little. What happened? I was, uh, as a young boy, I was an athlete. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, um, in Banitsa, they call them baby bands or at that time, we had the mini Olympics from the villages in the village. And I was the best jumper. And of course, the best jumper should have a, a flag bearer. To be the flag bearer. Flag bearer. Were flag you high bearer. jumping or? High jumping. High jumping. jumping. Okay. But we're competing with another fellow from another village who had just thing like that, who to get the, the thing like that. And uh, of course, uh, Sunday was, the, was supposed to be the Olympics. Friday night we were practicing in the village because we're in the center of town. And of course, I was carrying the flag, that's how we were practicing. Mm -hmm. I was gonna, um, they saw me, there's Karkomani there in the cafe, because there are two cafes side by side. And they say, whose son is that? And they ask each other, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. oh, to the communists, they took the flag away from me. They took the flag. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. My father is a deputy mayor. He doesn't go and tell, why did you take the, the flag from my son? I said, I'll fix him. So the Saturday we're making one more practice, Sunday is the Olympics. And I purposely I'm jumping so little. And my teachers come to me, come over here, Kiryaku, open, open your hands. He tried to hit me with that, he didn't hit me. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, how come you're not jumping? I said, what are you talking about? Don't you see I'm jumping? And he says to me, how can you jump here so there's so much and to do so little? And I say to him, how come 
I, uh, I had a uh, flag yesterday and I don't have a flag today. Mm. And he says, I don't know, we're going to go to the principal, we find out why they took a flag away. So we went to the principal, they, 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 they say, because you let the flag and you went to the washroom, you never should leave a flag uh, unintended or thing like that. No problem. So we go out to the teacher and says, Kiriaku, if you don't make me proud, you're not, I'm not going to pass you great. I jumped and I got the medal, first place. I had uh, thousands of people, they came and shook hands, they congratulated me. My father did not come <laughs> say, mm -hmm. to congratulate me, to say bravo, thing like that. Because? Not because he didn't like me, but so what? Yes. Sort of uh, feel like, so what? He saw them, thousands of people, they came congratulate me, thing like that, but he, he did not come and... Uh, uh -huh. and uh, to congratulate and, uh, you. But uh, thing like that. Then, can, can we just talk about your name? Uh, can you tell us about your name? You said uh, Kiriaku is your name. Uh, Kiriaku Nedelkov. Nedelkov. So tell us about uh, why it has two names. Well, uh, as uh, everybody knows, all our names has been changed from uh, Macedonia to, 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 to Greek. Yes. And even today, even here in Canada, if somebody comes to visit, they never say Paul Kiriaku. Only in the papers were Kiriaku. Mm -hmm. Pavel Nedelkov, Gocha Nedelkov, uh, and so on. All in the Macedonia. And when was the name changed? 19, uh, in the 1920s, you know, they started. But mostly in the, um, 1936 to, to 40, this uh, Metaxa, General Metaxa of Greece, he forbid to speak the, the Macedonian language. Mm -hmm. If you ever spoke Macedonian, I, I was myself because uh, even when I became a barber, I used to shave all the policemen and everything. They liked me as a we had the problem mostly from our people, the, uh, the um, uh, Gracomani, the Greek from the thing, they didn't give us a, a problem. But the Gracomani did the what? The Gracomani, because we used to have a, 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 a policeman from the area, from the thing, because minor Asian, yes. mostly in our area. They can they can take a blood from it. They didn't care about. But the people from South End, maybe more educated mm -hmm. or something, they believe me, they not give me hard time in as long as I had the, the barber shop and thing mm -hmm. like that. But the people, the, the people who were sympathizers of the Gurkhomani, yeah. they were asked to to uh, to spy on people and to tell oh, them stories, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because see, the policemen listen to them, right? See myself, like I said, my 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 barber shop, for example, was in there, and the two cafe was a hundred feet apart. If I didn't have the people to to do haircuts, I'll go in a, from each cafe to another cafe, and I was listen what they say, what they do, and everything mm -hmm. like that. And they, but I could because even in the barber shop, they'll talk about he's a garcoman, he's a because I learned from the, my young age how the people communicate in, in bandits. But mostly, like I said, the only small proportion of Gargomani, but the, the whole village was suffered because of, the, of that. They were all and afraid then, of them, yeah. yes. Uh, so can you tell us about your, we have a nice picture of your school, yeah. uh, in front of your school here. Yeah, can you tell us about a, your school this life? Is a, this is a two great, uh, two grade, grade two, two? Grade two. Mm -hmm. there must be in a 50, 54 or 55. Yes. 50, yeah, thing like that. And this is like you, you go up the stairs every morning. We line up uh, uh, thing first, the grade, the, the 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 first grade, second grade, and so on. And what was your life like in the city, in the in the school? In the school, I was I wasn't a good at, uh, at the school, believe mm -hmm. me, because my life was a uh, athlete, athlete, just to you like, like sports. That. But nobody could help me at home. My mom, she was a literate. She know she didn't know how to read and write. My father, she knew a little bit. My grandfather, she lear he learned a little bit in the So States. your parents didn't speak Greek? No. They no, didn't know no, Greek? Absolutely. And they didn't, didn't read or write Greek? Yeah, my father, he, he wrote a little Greek, mm -hmm. but uh, the, my mom, she didn't even know a word of, uh, of Greek. Then he learned a little bit, but my grandma, zero. She didn't even speak not even a word of uh, Greek. So nobody was able to no. help you? Yeah. But not because, because you had but to, to help in the school, you have to know that I never been to school. Like my father, he didn't have, he didn't finish uh, school. But uh, like I said, my grandfather, he had a focus on me. He says the reason I was so successful in my life because of him. So you finished your primary school, school. first, and then how did you become a barber? Okay, and then my last 
my last day of, uh, of school, mm -hmm. after I finished, the, the, the barbershop was just across the road, I finished at the school, I had to go watch and hold the coat for the customers, mm -hmm. sweeping the floor and so on. How old were you then, at the end of I was, uh, I was, uh, I started from 14, 15, and 16 I had my barbershop. Okay, so you went to school up to grade 8? Great, uh, the grade six. Grade six. Grade six. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you finished your school and started to apprentice uh, in the barbershop. Apprentice, apprentice, just watching the guy uh, 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 sweeping the floor and uh, mm -hmm. welcome thing like that. <laughs> so the my teacher, he doesn't want to teach me because he says if I teach him to do it, he's gonna take my customers. My, the the my, actual my, barber. My barber. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he got the visa to immigrate to Australia. In two weeks, he teach me how to become, become a barber. So in two weeks, you got in, in a super weeks, fast course on know, how to I become I didn't know much. And then I hired a, another barber from Leran mm -hmm. to be with me. Yes. And then slowly, slowly, I, I learned. Then I, I started taking uh, his business from another barber in town. He was uh, with a uh, police buddy buddy. Yes. And they sent me three times to give me a ticket because I opened before the churches, uh, I could not open the shop before the churches open on Sunday. Usually the farmers, I could do them on Sunday, where else? So they gave me a ticket, 1500 drachma. No problem. I had, I had four witness there. You cannot go against the police. If the police say you're wrong, you're wrong, bad. You cannot just go. Mm -hmm. thing. So I went to court, 1500 drachma. Thank you. Then again, they wanted to give me another ticket. The policeman from South, he says, Paul, close the thing, they're going to come and uh, give you a ticket. So, police or the police. The local, I say a uh, thing like that, they didn't like it, but the other guy was in the office, he overheard the, the head of the police. I said, well, go and give him a ticket. Mm -hmm. Who cares what? Tell him. So, another ticket to me. And he said, what's the diff? What now? He says, you have a hair on your razor. I said, what else should I have in there? Okay. Just to find an excuse. Mm -hmm. And then another... 1500 there, I got upset, I pack it up, my hair salon, I say to my mom, just give me a lunch, I'm going to go and work on underground. In the park, we had a couple. So they of kept on giving you... Uh, for, for no reason, just to, because the other barber, he was very, very, uh, still in some so of the So they wanted line. to drive you out. Uh, exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Uh, and then what did you do? You went... Then, uh, of course, uh, then I went to work underground, we have a coal mine there. Meaning? Me a coal mine. Yeah. In a coal mine. A coal mine underground. Yes. Then I was ready to come here to, to immigrate before I think, but I work about five, six months underground in the mines. And the, tell us about Banitsa and the industry in Banitsa with the, Banitza? With the mines. Banitsa was the, the, the richest village in the Lerinsk in a coal. In a, mm -hmm. in a, we had a coal mine. We had a Vartaka. Um, uh, uh, doesn't come to me the lime, lime, limestone. limestone. We are one of the most uh, thing like that, and we are the uh, what they need. So what they call them? Uh, a mill. Wheat, wheat mill. Two wheat, of them. Wheat one mills, time. Yes. And, the, and people like uh, um, in 1945, half of the wealth left and went to the Republic of Yugoslavia at that time. It went to the because they were they were afraid of the. Monarch of a sisters, not to think. Almost quarter of the, the people that immigrated went to Yugoslavia. In 1945? 1945 to 1949. Because the oppression was so strong yes. in, in so Greece the, by almost, the monarchist well, government. Those people, they are the wealthiest in the, in the village. The wealthiest went, mm -hmm. yes. And is this picture uh, part of uh, that this period is, of time? This is actually, it's very close where the oral, the riches of, think of the, the Safini and thing like that. This is in front of their house has been taken. In and front almost, of? almost half of those people, they left and went to, to Yugoslavia. To, to the Republic to of Republic Macedonia, Macedonia because yeah. they were so afraid that... That's right. from because the they were afraid because many people got killed and thing like that and they maybe were next. And they don't want to go to jails like other people and other things. So they would put them in jail? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, uh, Paul, can you give us a little bit more about uh, uh, what uh, kind of, uh, what your life was like in the school? You said you didn't speak. How did you learn Greek? Because your parents didn't. Well, at home, uh, we speak the Macedonian. Yes. But at school, you must speak Greek. They did not, they and you had to learn? Of course. At mm -hmm. school, that's the only thing they were, they were teaching us. 
But then, uh, and then as you grow older, were there any any problems if you spoke Macedonian? Oh, definitely, definitely. In the, Tell uh, us the about school, if the teacher, if the teacher here, one of the other, because we have some um, domazeti, which is uh, people marry uh, uh, ladies, ladies from, from our Barisa, village. Yeah. Their son, they they didn't speak the Macedonian language. Okay. If they overhear some very few small, if they hear it like to Yubaba Macedonia, and they go to school, I overheard Paul speaking, for example, Paul speaking Macedonia, and the teacher they used to give a few. So they things. so they would uh, they would say to the teacher that they would snitch on oh, you. Yeah, the snitch. We heard Paul speaking to the grandma. To, to the grandmother the, at home, at and home, even if you, you, even, even if for speaking yeah, at home, you were punished. Enough. Then, uh, uh, of course, when we go out to the, in the village, in the Volta, we call them just uh, back and forth. Mostly we spoke the Greek, the Greek because we, we feel like it's a hopper thing, like, like to speak the Greek, not the Macedonia, just something. But then, as soon as you come home, I have 100% mm -hmm. Macedonia. And at school, if you spoke Greek, what would the teachers do sometimes? But we didn't, uh, we could not, uh, at school we could not speak the Macedonian because we were afraid of the teacher. Imagine... When you were afraid, what did they do? Nothing. They come and spank you low with a little stick. So they would hit you they on, hit on you, the yeah, hand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, then as you go, then um, as you get older, then they used to get the kids as a young age, they used to send them like a kindergartner, and they teach them strictly Greek, so they for, to forget the Macedonia. The yes, language, the to language, keep them away from their them. grandparents. They know. First they used to spank you, but then they with the, with the thing, so they, they would teach you the, the best, you know, the, the, the school that is, uh, the, the kindergarten school, they used to get them, preschoolers I should say, Yes. and they teach them strictly Greek, and as soon as those kids grow up, and that's the only language they know. That was the only language yeah. they knew, that was a way of uh, yeah. taking out uh, the Macedonian uh, mm -hmm. language from mm -hmm. their family. Yes. Uh, can you tell us now uh, about uh, anything else about your school life uh, before you became a barber? Actually, my school, uh, the school was like I said, we, we mm -hmm. is going to school not because we wanted to, we just mm -hmm. to go to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we didn't know much about, we never, but like I say, as uh, soon as I become teenager, like I said, my grandfather, he had to focus on me. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, my father says, because we are, we are the shepherd, we are goats and cows and everything, he says, go be a cowboy or a thing like that. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather says, I'll go wherever he's supposed to go, mm -hmm. uh, but send them to learn trade, because he knew in the depression in the States, if he didn't have a trade, people used to jump at train and kill themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's mean if you have a trade, you're, you're going to survive you're gonna survive there, and that's all. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I put the sign Paul Kiriaku a barber shop, my grandfather used to be five feet five. He used to walk five feet uh, ten. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, the businessman, right? He yeah. was, but not my father. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, he didn't uh, hate me, but he didn't know. But my my grandfather was proud of me. Mm -hmm. And I, he's like a, like a saint to me, even I have pictures and everything. The, the reason I'm success, again, I'm keep repeating, because of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Now, do you have some information there you wanted to okay. share about uh, the village? Traditions and yes, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, celebrations and okay. traditions were from your village that well, you remember? Cel celebration, uh, I remember all of them, most of them. Uh, like I said, Christmas, we celebrate like uh, three days uh, uh, with a band in the middle of town. And that's the only we can see the girls. So we didn't have the telephones and something coming. The, the girls dancing and stuff like that. And Easter, of course, three days uh, thing. And we have a Georgia Den. St. George we, Day. St. George mm -hmm. Day. Because uh, we have two churches of the same name. One, uh, the old one and the thing. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, out of the town, uh, the St. George. All the girl, the whole town all will go celebrate like a picnic, mm -hmm. thing like that. And of course, May 1st, we have a big celebration. We go to another monastery, which is out of the town. We celebrate things like that. And we have some tradition, like uh, we have, um, for the kids, uh, Kola the Baba, Kola the Baba, whatever. Mm -hmm. Surva. Around comes, Christmas, uh, yeah. The, uh, this New Year's thing, the boys and girls. And we have another tradition they call it Varivar, Varivar. The girls used to go and collect a flower from each of the group of girls. And whatever they collect, 
they go to the one house of the thing and the, the, the mother and they will, they will bake something, the pituli or whatever they call them, uh, masnik, zelnik, whatever, thing like that. But before they go, they are born in a, 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 a leshta, what they call the leshta. Uh, uh, they, they make, they, they the, uh, boil uh, the boil, uh, thing. Uh, yes. And the girls is to go and give to the, each household. Mm -hmm. And the house, household will give them flour and everything. They will go home and thing like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, then whatever they're cooking, they'll go back and give them to each, uh, to, the, to the neighbors and everything. So lentils, like, they, they yeah. would... They First they give them the lentils, lentils but when they come they home and they cook whatever they cook, uh, any uh, special, each home will do a different. Mm -hmm. One will do pituli, one biscotti, we call them iron in, in, in English, how yes. they call them. And uh, that's all. And the next uh, was the Lazar. Yes. Lazar is like, let's say as a boy in the, in the household, the girls will come and dance, and if that girl is interested in one of the boys, they'll, 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 they'll lead the, and that's the first time I, 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 met, I saw my, my, my wife, and uh, they came in my house and dancing, they put her to dance, uh -huh. and you can tell because she's interested in me. But maybe they discuss that between them. Yes. And then they go to the next household, they know, uh, oh, there's a boy there, if there's a boy, they put that certain, there were seven, eight girls together, they dancing. So they so come together and dance to the they house dance, where they, the boy is. They, they dance every house, they, they dance, uh, they made a, they lead and dance, and we give them something, they, just like a, 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 on the boys play Halloween, something like, like that. Like treats, they, you give treat, them some give treats them to the girls like, for, dancing. Yeah, for dancing. Okay. Yesterday, a tradition, this is a very old tradition in, a, in a, as far as my grandfather and the great great grandfather. They call him Pastovačka. Prochka. Pastovačka. Prostovačka. 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 Prosti. Prosti. To forgive each other, yes. So, just like I said before I came, I stopped to this lady. She came and says, first you go to the best man, the Kumu. Yes. Hundred percent, she must visit. They make a sweet, uh, sweet stuff and things like that. Yeah. And then go from house to house. then. If the brothers they fight or they don't talk each other, and that's the day to make up. They they go to each other and they, ask to for each, forgiveness. To forgiveness and yes. Like but definitely the the youngest to even if there's right, the youngest you have to go and say prosti me. Okay, know, so the youngest is the one that they, should ask for forgiveness for, first. For forgiveness, yeah, thing mm -hmm. like that. And. Uh, we had some uh, igrachki with the, the boys and girls. Toys? Toy. Yes, what and kind one. of toys did you play with? Well, uh, not the toys, we call them uh, uh, games. Not oh, the games, toys. you Game, played games, ga yes. Games. Uh, first we call them tuturka. Okay, how we do you play tuturka? Tuturka, we put a, a, a three stones, a far away, about ten feet away, and three yes. stones, we take a stone, mm -hmm. whoever knocked those stones down, and then they climb, they have to climb on each other to go uh, from one to, to another, then they they throw me. Uh -huh. And the, the next is uh, the column um, Tuturka. Uh, just the boys like a, uh, like a uh, head here, hide and see, and thing hide like, and hide and see and thing like uh -huh. that. And Kotka. Kotka, we, a guy was sitting on a post in the middle, we get a whole can of thing with, a, with a, like, a, like a sticks. If you hit them around in the, so to prevent them not to hit them with the, with the, with the can, mm -hmm. and if you hit them, then, the, the, then I'll go and thing like that. Mm -hmm. And they call them on that, they'll, they'll go magare. Mm -hmm. You have three people sitting, thing like that, and you can and as many people to climb each other, mm -hmm. but you have to hold it for so many, for so many minutes. minutes. And uh, marble, we, we used to do lots of With marbles. marbles. yes. Then the next we call them a pl uh, uh, Placa Chuvana. How do you play that? Placa Chuvana, we put a, a, a little round, round uh, stone yes. and put it with the money. We pay the, we used to pay the, 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 the steel money we had in Greece, the, the coins. Like a sense. Coins. The coins. Uh -huh. And you go with the, with the flat thing, if you, if you go and kick that thing, if you go underneath, you got the money. Okay. <laughs> so you take the, let's say it can be a can, but it used to be a low stone. You just go with that flat thing like that and... Uh, you they, throw the stone. For, for the stone, if you go, if just like can. you do, they could in the, now in the Olympic, they're doing the, uh, what they call the stone. Uh, uh, yeah, curly. just like, just oh. like you call it. We, we go with that thing uh, then. Uh, if you if you go far, then then the other fellow goes. Okay. If you miss it, uh, if you like, there are maybe 
12, 15 feet apart, I think. Right? This is, uh, there are a few small things, but that's all the most important thing. Right? And what was that called again? Uh, Placa Pla Pla Chuvana. Placa Pla Chuvana. Pla Pla mm -hmm. okay. And the girls used to play pato. 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 They used to write on the, on the, on the ground uh, thing like that. Mm -hmm. They take a flat thing and uh, they jump and they go from one box to another to a box to pass it through. Yes. Uh, just a flat look of uh, stone. Stone, stone. Yeah, they throw it. Yeah. No, they didn't throw it. They, they put it on the ground, but yes. with one leg. Yes. You jump and you push it to the. If you go on the line, then the then other person take off. They're squares. Yes. You must buy the four squares. The yeah. four squares, squares, squares. Then if you start, then if you if you if you don't push the thing, it's at, uh, in the square. Then the other person takes something. So the aim is to get it up fast yeah. without. And the the girls used to play the kalamashichi. From the lamb, they used to get the little bone thing like that. They, they used to play and uh, they color them and they put it underneath the hand. They throw the ball. And they have to put the thing they catch the ball, they throw the thing catch the ball. Okay. And we call them a shichi, but I don't know what. And, uh, mm -hmm. This come from the, on, you, on, you, on the lamb, when you kill a lamb, and just a tiny little spot, uh, oshik, you know. The bone. The bone. But this is a special little thing, a square little thing. Uh -huh. And we collect them because we have lots of them. That's what the girls used to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <clears throat> and uh, with uh, uh, with that in mind, when you uh, finished, when you started your business, and uh, you you mentioned uh, you were uh, a barber in your village, and then in the mines you went. Uh, when and why did you come to Canada? How did that decision come about? Okay, actually, I defect uh, Greece. Uh, tell I us about to, that. I was supposed to go in the army because I don't want to serve in the army. And how old were you? I was uh, 19 to 20. I'm just going to turn 20. 20, if, uh, if you if you line is serving, you cannot leave the country. Okay. If you think. Because I had some connection, mm -hmm. one of my countrymen who worked in the, in the government in Athens, mm -hmm. and I say, I say to him, so so, I want to immigrate to, but Paul, we cannot leave, says, but uh, I know somebody in the army they, uh, I went to the uh, Canadian authorities says, from us, you're clear to go. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I was engaged to Elizabeth, to my wife. She could not apply for me because she was too young to be. Then I went to this officer because it was recommended from the, from the government. And uh, I said, okay, good morning, good morning. And I said, so, so, I said, uh, 11,000 dragged me. He could not pay the army, but that was a, Oh. Under, the under, the table. under the table. Without me, without me knowing, I got the step. I'm not going back to Vanitsa. I want to leave right away, not to find out my people because I'm leaving. Then I could not, uh, nobody to find out I'm leaving. You didn't want anybody to then know. To, to know. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, my, my father is supposed to uh, travel with me in 20 days difference. I took his ticket mm -hmm. and I went to, the call him the place Patra. I took the boat, in Petra, uh, in Petra, yeah. I took the boat. As soon as I tried to get in the boat and it says uh, you're defecting, they hand, hand, yes. handcuffed me. They handcuffed you? They handcuffed me and they sent me to a policeman, to the police station. And this is, believe me, this is uh, my best luck of my life, what happened. This gentleman, the one, the, pol the policeman, the head of the police, he used to serve in my village in 1936. Mm -hmm. And he used to pass the, to one, the, one MP, he stopped in the village, and I knew him from that, 1936, I was there, and I knew his face and everything. And as, as soon as the policeman said, I saw him, uh, hi, Mr. Petrova, he says, uh, how do you know, how are you talking to her? I said, I know Mr. Petrova. And I say, where do you come from? Uh, uh, I said, from Vevi, from Bansa. Mm -hmm. I saw this thing. Okay, he says two, two oranges. He ordered the policeman and he started talking. He says to me, you know he cannot leave. I said, Mr. Petrova, I'm not lying to you. He says he cannot pay the army, period. How and did he know that you were defecting the army? No, well he knows because of what he... Uh, uh, he was that, that age he cannot leave, that age. Okay. Uh, absolutely, because uh, my class was serving. Because they used to collect them from each uh, part of Greece. If as uh, soon as your class is, uh, you cannot leave the country regardless, you cannot pay. Mm -hmm. 
And so we started talking, he told me about the old people in the bandits and stuff like that. <clears throat> he says, you're very lucky you're in my hands. I want you to be a nice, he says, nice Greek. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, thank you very much. If it wasn't for him, I could have gone to serve in the army. So then he let you go? He let me go and I got the ship and I came here to... Yeah, now, did, who uh, sponsored you? Did you have people? Nobody sponsored me. I came here as a tourist because my wife, my, 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 my fiancé at that time was too young to apply for me. She was mm -hmm. not even 16 years old. Uh, uh, then I came here and the Canadian government says, if you don't get married, in 30 days. So did you know anybody? Where did you come for, with the, from? Like, tell us about well, the I, trip. Well, I was coming to my fiancé, but uh, uh, because she was here, no problem, we were, we were engaged. Oh, so, you, so Elizabeth was here? She was here. She came before me, seven months before me. Okay, so you came to visit her? To, to visit her and, of course, to marry her. Okay. But many Greeks, they used to, many Greeks, they used to come... Uh, okay, so can you tell us uh, the, the name of... Um, the, you, the Vulcania. Fiance. Oh, your fiancé, yeah, oh, that's well, the ship. My, my fiancé was uh, Litsa Amba, Aboa. Litsa? Litsa Aboa. 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 Amba Spogatske, Aboa. Aboa. And the Macedonian kako? What was her Macedonian name? Abwa, Litsa. Litsa Abwa. Litsa, it's up in English, Litsa, 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 and the, uh, the Canadian government says, uh, because many Greeks used to come just to stay in this country, and if you don't get married, they send you back. Mm -hmm. So I came here, they gave me about 30 days, so we went to do the civil, war, civil uh, uh, right. marriage, uh -huh. and then two, three months after we had the uh, Orthodox mm -hmm. marriage. Thing. So when you came here, did you come uh, to, some, to somebody's house? Of course, to my to my fiancée where she lived. And, uh, so you, you said, came, so yeah. the parents knew you and you came straight yeah, to their yeah. place? To the place which is, they live in uh, Coxville and Girard. No. So in Toronto here at Coxville and Girard? Coxville and Girard, yeah. Okay. So then you, you tell us about that, um, that beginning, how your life started. That beginning actually, like I said, we, 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 we stopped in uh, um, Halifax, which is where we arrived, and we came by, by train to the Union Station. Yeah, in the name of the boat again? Uh, Volcania. 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 So we so, stopped in Halifax. Uh, uh -huh. Halifax, and we, they mis, misplaced the, the mis thing, the day, the hours, nobody came into the Union Station to look for me. I said, oh my God, what I do? English, zero. And then there was a lady who was with me. Uh, uh, she, got, she came to Macedonia and got married, and we, we, she knew to speak a little English. Mm -hmm. So we got a taxi. She, they sent me. I went home, and they got surprised. They followed me. My wife, she worked. Uh, she's supposed to come at night, and uh, all of a sudden. But then we never looked back. That's, mm -hmm. uh, we lived a little bit in, uh, in that house, then we bought our own house for the mm -hmm. round. So uh, w when you started uh, living in, uh, in Canada, um, what kind of work did you do to make a living? Okay, my first job, I, I, I worked as a restaurant as a busboy at Thornclay Plaza. What restaurant was that? At Thornclay Plaza, and it uh, was yes. the, f the first plaza open, and I used to work at that time, you know, thing. Uh, and uh, for just for a short time, then I, I find a little, uh, as a barbershop, as a, in a young state, which you think. And my English, actually, I learned them. Uh, still, I don't speak it perfect, but still, I, the, the Canadian people are so good to me. They used to come and don't worry about it, teach me uh, this and that and this and that. And I was looking in the paper, the newspaper, somebody was looking for a barber in the Westbury Hotel in downtown for months. And the day when my, one of my daughter was born, as soon as I left my wife in the hospital, I said, I'm going to go look at that, uh, that thing. So I, I went to him and all of a sudden he said, where did you work before? I said, actually, in Sinclair and Young. I said, you got the job because uh, I went over there to throw me out. To make the sto story short, I got that job. I worked for 10 years and I had the best, the best job I could anybody get, you know. 
all my uh, uh, businessmen uh, next to the uh, Maple Leaf Garden, the, the hotel, or Westbury Hotel. I stayed there for 10 years, and that's where I learned all my, most of my, anything. Mm -hmm. After 10 years, I went to open my first uh, hair barbershop in the Das Evans building in, uh -huh. in Scarborough. Yes, so you, you, you mentioned also that you, you were in Scarborough for a yes, long time. Yes. Tell us about uh, um, where in Scarborough you worked. That Sky, you said it was It's, a, it's, a Napier, it's uh, a Napier, Napier Plaza, which is uh, Brimley and uh, Brimley and Eglinton. Yes. I still worked in Westbury, but my wife she says I want to open my own hair salon, and we bought a barbershop and hair salon. I let my wife work in uh, in the hair salon, and I still work in uh, in Westbury because was uh, I used to make a good money that uh, way. Mm -hmm. And somehow the barber used to work for uh, in the salon. He says, I'm going for six weeks uh, in Italy, you know, Italian guy. And I said to my boss in uh, Westport, I said, I'm going to take a three weeks off. Did you know what I was going to take a three weeks? So I went to work in Scarborough. Even though we charge half the price in Scarborough, mm -hmm. I was making just as much money as I was making in Westbury. Mm -hmm. So I went and gave him notice. I said, uh, his name was Paul too. I said, Paul, don't leave. He says, so then we started at uh, both uh, one barbershop and a hair salon. Mm -hmm. And this was right at Eglinton and Brimley? Brimley, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Napio Plaza, they come. Yes. Just uh, between a uh, thing like that. We were a thing. Then after, uh, after five, after seven, after seven years, mm -hmm. we opened the one in, uh, in, uh, in Markham, Unionville. Yes, yeah. and uh, yeah. there your business really uh, became ex expanded. Yes. And tell us about how your business e expanded and what was the what was your success uh, okay. like? Okay, this one, uh, like as soon as I got that uh, image in, in my hair salon, mm -hmm. all the media came, CTV, all the t t TV, the Macedonia program, they had me interview, like uh, yes. a minus thing, interview me, uh, what I did and I thing like that. And that was in Markham, when you started in, Mar Markham. in Markham. And in what year was actually, that? Actually, I uh, had uh, um, Scarborough, which is then we moved from Vasa, we lived to Kennedy and Anglington, where Loveless was. We opened there. Okay, in terms of years, wh when was your first, uh, your first store? In 1972. And that was at Eglinton and Brimley? Right. And what was the name of your Liz, shop? Liz and Paul. Liz no, and Paul. No, Paul K and Liz and Paul. Paul K is the barbers like Kiriako. Yes. Paul K and, uh, and, and Liz, Liz, uh, Liz, Liz and Paul. And that was 1972. Two. And then you stayed there for a few years? For and about then five years. Five I stayed years. then we went to Kennedy and Anglington. And you opened up and another shop? No, shop. Then immediately after some, we, we moved to Unionville and I opened the, the first shop in Markham, Unionville. What year in Unionville did you open up? In Unionville, 1970, uh, no, 1980. In the 1980s, yeah. 1980. Yeah. And so by 1980, um, we have a, a, a picture here of your uh, um, of your business. You had uh, several shops yes, by then. Yes. Can you tell us how you expanded? Okay. So, um, when I got the, the imaging, I wanted. Uh, I didn't want it to expand. And shortly after, uh, one of the hotel, the uh, they were building the Hilton Hotel in the Warden Highway Seven. Yes. I went to apply, and there was seven star hotel, and says you're not qualified. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, no, no problem. I, I have two salons, one in uh, Scarborough, one in Thing. And weeks, a couple of weeks after Sheraton Hotel, the manager called me said, because they saw all the write up in the papers. And said, would you like to open a hair salon in our uh, hotel? I said, by all means. And he says, but you must bring that imaging. So no problem, then a three salon. And of course, I, lo I, I love to work in a hotel, so because I'm familiar, I started working in a Sheraton hotel. And one, one day, uh, a gentleman walks in for a haircut. I didn't know who was it. As soon as I finish him, uh, he says, uh, my name is Herman Grad. I'm the owner of the Embassy Suite that time. Then they chose Hilton Hotel, Warden and Seven. Would you like to open a hair salon in my in my shop? I say I apply. The owner, the owner, he says, give me a blueprint. We'll fix it up, but he must bring that image. 
So you used hair imaging. Tell us a little bit about that for people okay. who don't know. That one, uh, let's say, come uh, come in my hair salon for mm -hmm. haircut. No, not uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah. The uh, first was to measure the face. Then it came with a picture. I take a picture of you. Mm -hmm. I, I scan it in the, in, the, in the computer, and the computer is gonna show you about. Uh, 10 up to 20 different styles, long, medium, thing mm -hmm. like that. Okay, I like that thing. I, if you if you don't want, want me to cut the hair, my people, which are the 30 people working there, you can buy my my picture or charge extra, go to the thing. Uh, but if you stay with us, I store that in my computer, and then you come two three months, I put your telephone number and that picture that appears, mm -hmm. and we get. Then we update in, uh, the program before I forget. Then the people which is I purchased the the imaging, they had me. I went to Helsinki to fight for the side for the for Canada, represent Canada and the computer imaging. For two weeks they sent me in Helsinki because of the in Helsinki, the, in Helsinki. at a hairdresser. And, uh, no, not hairdresser. Just to fight who are for the for the imaging. There are so many other companies mm -hmm. who to become, and I got the first for the company, and they give me another uh, software free of charge because I was. Uh, the, then I took an extra week. I went through Russia and I come back just because of that. Just because of the computer imaging. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. How did you find out about that technology? Because you were really well, unique. Well, again, we are, uh, me and my wife, we tra were travelers. We used to have uh, lots of seminars because we, we, from the day one, we liked to go. I went to the big uh, cruise. I was a, uh, uh, so a well, young girl was demonstrating uh, in thing. Mm -hmm. And plus in Toronto, in the uh, Toronto downtown. There were about six, seven thousand hairdressers, and at this girl, as I was looking at that girl, I said, "This is something." But the, somebody took uh, my half of my business and opened down the in Unionville, worked for me, and I could not think about how can I improve my business. Again, I'm going to mention my grandfather. My grandfather never saw a computer in his life. And in my dream, because for two weeks I was going to get crazy, how can I do to improve my business? Because in Unionville, they took half of my business and they opened down the street. In my dream, my grandfather, he says that imaging. My, my grandfather did never, never saw an imaging in his life. I get up in the morning and I say to my wife, I'm going to go and get that image. I said, okay, I, uh, I said, we're going to get the money. We bought a house with a penny on the, on the bank. I go to the... Uh, Manager, I say, Ed, and I know his name. I said eight thousand dollars because that's what you need eight thousand dollars for the software and I think He says, "Paul, not even eight thousand. One of my clients, Macedonia lady, she works as a secretary. He says, "Paul, I'm Ed. Paul is an honest man. Give him that money." And believe me, if it wasn't for that lady, she give me the money. That money, I will purchase the system. And I was the most, not the best, mind you, the most popular hairdresser in Canada because of that imaging, because of that lady, because they gave me the money. And then the first shop went, the third shop, actually six, six hair salons opened one after the other. Because of that, if I didn't have the money to buy the, the, the thing, the I could not service it. And then uh, when I went to Helsinki, I give them the telephone, the Scarborough telephone. My wife was alone and thousands of people called and she didn't know what to say. So after two weeks I came and I started doing it myself. I used to go from hair salon to hair salon. I analyze people, I give them the, the picture to the hairdresser, I go to the another hair salon, which is in the highway seven out of three, three mm -hmm. salons. And that's, that's what I fear just because of that uh, image in my... Otherwise, I used to hate computers. I, don't, I didn't even know. Now I sleep with the computers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and when you came to Canada, uh, you were involved in some Macedonian um, organizations, like okay. village organizations, like Manisa. Actually, I, I, for 15 years I played soccer in the, in the, in the, for the Macedonia. We won the champion in 1970. Tell us the, about the, the soccer Brown. team. Well, uh, George Brown, actually, uh, uh, Jim Trendos, which is, he passed away after, shortly after us, and his uh, Jim, uh, Tom Trendos was involved. Uh, of course, George Brown was a thing like that. 
So we won the champion. This was Banitsa's. No, no, <laughs> the Macedonia, the, the Steve Stavros uh, thing like that. This, the, it was the Macedonian, Macedonian soccer, team. soccer team. Okay. Nothing to do with the Greek, nothing. And Same. we have a picture. Yeah. And that's uh, mostly few on uh, from the Volini, and the other ones, all the Macedonia boys from us. Uh, different villages different playing villages, for yeah. Macedonia. Yeah, yeah. Can you show uh, your picture one more time so we know where you are? Yeah, right there. Right there. Okay. So did you be so you belonged in the um, in the soccer team, Macedonia yes, soccer team? Yes, for 15 years I was uh, I was the most valuable player in, uh, for three three years in a row myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, tell us about uh, where you played and we play uh, met uh, we play uh, uh, all over Metro. And then we played in the national, and we became national league with Steve Stavro first. Uh, as soon as he left, uh. he supported then, that. then uh, George mm -hmm. George Brown was ahead, and uh, Jim Jim Tender they started in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So then uh, 19 we won the champion uh, uh, in here, and then what I, was it? When did you win it? 19? 1970. 1970, you yeah, won the championship. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That was a big, a big too, because I was a good player. Actually, the Greeks they wanted me to play, I think, and I refused that thing like that. They wanted you to play the, for the Greek team. Actually, when mm -hmm. I first came to, to to Canada, somebody knew of me back home because I'm a good player. As soon as I arrived here, that was in February. I was in a train, and the Greeks they play uh, some other English team in uh, Broadview and uh, in Girard, mm -hmm. which is a YMCA. I was there, and they they. They they didn't sign me, but they let me play. They know I'm a good player, mm -hmm. and I I hurt myself um, before I get married. Then my wife didn't even know. They stole me actually. They took me secretly from my house. They didn't even tell because I've got to play soccer. For the I was so fanatic team. about uh, no, that. That was for the Greek team once. For once, once for. okay. Then I heard I never went. Then I went with the Macedonia. Actually, actually Banica had the team for a while in the beginning. And then I started playing, then I, uh, I went to the Macedonia, I played almost for 10, 10 12 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, over here, like I used to cut for two years, I used to cut the old man's hair. At the and Canadian I, Macedonian yes, place where we are now? And I used to give him the money to the... You donated to, to, it to, yeah, to Canadian, Canadian Macedonian, Macedonian place. Macedonia. That's, that's great. Yeah. And um, tell us about uh, just... Uh, to be for the uh, salons. It's, so at one time you had five or six? Six actually, yeah. You, do you still have them or no, slowly? No, we just have one now. Mm -hmm. Well, I opened one in uh, Oak Ridges, mm -hmm. then in one in Cannington, and in Cannington I went back. Mm -hmm. I opened a pizza place, a restaurant, and a farm, and a Century home, I, and then I ran for a counselor there. Yes, tell us about tell us about uh, your the the special uh, picture here in the newspaper of your home in uh, Kennington. Ken. Well, my home was like I said, Century home, and uh, they asked me if they can have a house tour. House and tour, house so people tour. can see it. Can see it because mm -hmm. it was one of a kind, uh, one of a kind church. Actually, two. Two in a row, in a couple of days, a couple of years, they did it twice, thing like that. And uh, then, because when I ran for a counselor there, mm -hmm. uh, and that was, I repeat to them, because this is uh, this is all I got. I have a farm. I this I have to have a speech, of course, you know, here and my thing like that. And uh, about five years ago, I, I sold them everything in Kennington. Then we came in Mount Albert. We just have a nice little bungalow now and thing like that. You're in Mount Albert, Mount Albert yeah. presently. Right, right. But yeah, how long did you stay in Kennington? 45 years. So you spent a lot of so, your life uh, in Kennington. We still uh, in, in, in Unionville, we had a house, uh, we had a house in, in Kennington. Mm -hmm. Every weekend we used to go for about 10 years, two houses. Then uh, my wife was in a very terrible Horrible accident, I should say, and um, her mom got killed, and uh, somebody t on the ambulance. And uh, my Sorry? somebody t on the ambulance, and they bringing her mom to the uh, hospital. Oh, that's a horrible. So then, anyway, with my wife, says too much memory. We sold the Cannington Unionville, then we all moved to uh, Cannington. I used to drive for 20 years uh, Cannington Markham in the hair salon to drive, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we loved it. Then I say I uh, uh, opened a restaurant there and a pizza place and everything. I, I went back and I ran for a counselor. 
but then uh, unfortunately then I disliked them, I saw everything. And, and right, I, when you ranked for a counselor, that was in 1996, right? 96, yeah. Uh -huh. And tell us what motivated you to run for a counselor okay. at Kennington. Believe me, if I put in my mind for something, <laughs> nobody will change my mind. I, had, I, I, uh, I, I, first one I decided to run and I put in the papers and uh, one of the Kennington men, he says, Paul, why don't you stop and let the other Paul who wins this uh, just pull out? But he was, used to come for haircut and he was the head of the Lions Club there. I used to go, I used to be a Lion too, myself. Mm -hmm. He says, pull out, says, let, uh, for example, the other person. I say, Okay, but I didn't give him any answer, and I was driving home to, to Unionville that time, and I talked to myself, that's a news, stupid. I know if I say something, I'll do it, I'll do it, and then the judgment, or I, I call him back, I say, I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. Like I say, they don't, I don't even know how to spell five words in English, they didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So I made uh, my daughter say, they made me a nice speech, I went there, 500 people, I am Paolo Kiriakou, and things like that, and mm -hmm. then. So, uh, because, because of me, they didn't have the gas there, they didn't have the uh, bus to go in Kennington, because I had a big connection. I brought them gas and everything, but they, they did not vote. If you're not born there, they're not going to elect you, thing like that. But I think, I say, if you elect me, what am I going to do now? <laughs> So you, you ran? I ran and yes. I uh, become second, and, uh, but... Yes. Uh, it was a good a, experience. Ex absolutely, that was yeah. my best experience in uh, my mm -hmm. life. So you were very busy working uh, in your shops and, mm. uh, uh, and then uh, with your... Uh, also running for, yeah. for, yeah. uh, for counselor yeah. and your other activities. Were you involved in, the, in, in any of the Masonian churches during this no. time? No, or? no, no. I myself, uh, like I say, I'm a, another church man, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like uh, one of my daughters got married in the Macedonian church, one in the Greek, and two in the Greek church because the intermarriages, whatever. But I am uh, believe me, I myself, uh, maybe not uh, people can see me, but uh, behind I'm a true Macedonian and I always uh, mm -hmm. like Zoran knows because uh, Jimmy, of course, otherwise Jimmy will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. Yeah, and did you belong to the Banitsa uh, uh, no, group no. or did you attend Macedonian ch dances? Oh, all of them. Yes. Macedonia and uh, even in the Greek side I go, to both sides, believe me. Even Sviti Kirill, I used to go to Sviti Kirill uh, way in the 60s. Yes. And then nothing stopped me to, I know where I am, nobody will change my, mm -hmm. believe me, I don't care. If, even if I speak Greek sometimes, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm a Greek or a, uh, but you believe. continue to be involved in Macedonian Absolutely. community and activities, Absolutely. picnics. Every ballroom what they do in the Statsky Dome, I never miss that. Other than when we have that little with uh, Mrs. Evans, you know, mm -hmm. that was a little conflict thing. But, but I never miss that. We had the Oro Makedonsko, I was the first one there, mm -hmm. uh, which is Van Gale, all the painting, that was yes. my money. Tell, tell us about your support for, for uh, the Macedonian artist Van Gale. Okay. Uh, he came from... Vangel, uh, Vangel Nikovsky. Nikovsky, Nikovsky, yes. I saw uh, once the Begalci there, the uh, Woro yes. dance, and I saw one of the art of them. I said, who is the artist? You saw his art? Uh, art, one little art here, I think, mm -hmm. and I uh, introduced to myself, and I said, my pal, can you have that? So slowly, uh, he says, I don't have a place where to stay. He needed a place to stay. To stay. In the meantime, I had the two homes. I had in uh, Unionville, uh, actually in, uh, in East York. Uh, East York, you and had then a house, I was yeah. moving to a new house in Unionville. Unionville. But before I fixed it and everything, I, I let him stay in my in my house and paint and everything. I bought all the pictures, all the things like that. But he was a refugee here. Yes, he came because As, yeah, uh, a he refugee from, from Aegean yeah. Macedonia. But they were ready to let them go because of my hair dress in downtown. I used to know lots of MPs and stuff like that. I said, don't worry about it. We went and it's no problem. He stays staying like that. So now, because uh, my business used to do well, I put them in the payroll, like working for me as a hairdresser. Yes. Then he stayed in my house for about three, four, I don't know how many months he stayed for that. So, I was going to open a hair salon, I mean, not hair salon, shop for him to do because I think like that. Then all of a sudden he was painting that, uh, the painting on our show in the Begalzi. Mm -hmm. Took him forever to, to finish it. 
because of now I'm eating, I'm drinking, I'm thinking if I finish it, I'm not going to have a thing. Finally, one day I say, no more. And then uh, he called my, my brother, Najimi Mangos. He packed it up, they went elsewhere, they went to an apartment and a thing like that. Mm -hmm. That time I paid for the apartment. He brought his sister from back home. So you helped to support? To support them, yeah, uh, yes, thing yes. like that. Then all of a sudden I hear uh, uh, on, on I side in the world of Macedonia, all my painting. I was so upset. Honestly, I feel like to take a razor and cut it. Oh, that was my money and everything. It cost me five thousand dollars on him. Mm -hmm. And then I sent him a letter. I said, Vangel, you owe me five thousand dollars. I don't want you five, but three thousand dollars. I want it. He sent me a letter with his lawyer. He says uh, he let me work on his farm and things like that, and uh, of course I put him in payroll, he put me in trouble. He disappointed me very much. Then ever since, I never talked, I never spoke to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was not a very, a very good experience yeah. for you. Um, can you tell us uh, about a little bit more about um, your, how you met your wife? You told us her name, oh, how wife, you met. My wife, of course, I, I used to have the barbershop. And if you're, if you're a businessman, all the girls after This is you, in, Banica, in Banica, way back in Banica. In Banica uh -huh. no? And all of a sudden, one of my um, uh, sister-in-law's mom, and he says to her, Paul, Paul is a good man, Paul is a good man. So, and this girl, she used to go in front of my barbershop two or three times a day. I said, what the hell, this girl, is, uh, she was uh, so skinny and things like that. And uh, finally, on like I said, they pray Lazara, she came and danced in my home. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden we got together, we used to, uh, we harvested the corn and we used to peel it by hands. We, we used to go from one household to another household, so purposely now we knew that girl was going to peel uh, the thing. So corn. we want the boys together and stuff like that. So at night I was going to bring them home. The dark, we don't have lights in the band or something like that. So I went to bring her home, and of course her mom came and welcomed her, uh, welcome there were some other girls too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she gives them, because they had the orchard, they gave me some apples, stuff like that. And then I said, this woman, she likes me. So then I, in the next couple of days, I walk in their, uh, in their house, they welcome me, things like that. And, uh, but shortly after, about six, seven months, they, they immigrate to, to Canada. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, uh, and when we came to Canada, my mother-in-law, she lived with me for four years. Four? Four years. Four zero. Four years. Four zero. Oh, so you, uh, yeah. your, uh, Elizabeth, your wife's mom. My wife, she never been separated until she got killed from the, from the car accident. Mm -hmm. And some people, they don't want a mother-in-law with them, but that woman was to, to us like a god, you know. I mean, my wife, we travel all over. We leave the kids with her. She raised our kids in the best. To the Macedonia thing, to the... She spoke to them in the, Macedonia. They all speak Macedonia. Three of my kids, they speak Macedonia. Not perfect, but they speak Macedonia because of her. And who, and how many kids do you have? Three? Can you tell us three, their names? Three kids. Uh, um, uh, Gina, Georgia, mm -hmm. Gina, Christina, and Menka. And Menka. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, with uh, your... Children grew up, and what are they uh, at the moment? Do do you have grandchildren? <clears throat> yes, eight eight grandchildren. Uh, uh, my oldest daughter, she had uh, two daughters and a son. Mm -hmm. My grandson, he was an Oscars a couple of years in Los Angeles. He he produced. Uh, he was a photo photographer, and he was uh, in the Oscar in the La in Los tell, Angeles. Yes, and what is his name? Ale Alex or Ordanis. Alex Alex or Ordanis. Ordanis. And uh, is he one? Of, is he your grandson my that older, came to do your uh, yeah, he's the one video? The tell video. us yeah. about uh, the video that is on uh, on YouTube of. Uh, the well, he, the he, yeah, he did barber. it in Barnes, so he was there, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't even know the guy because he's very good in that, and uh, we, we went around and that's, he's the one who did it, yeah. That's your grandson. Now, now he's in the States, I think he's doing another film, he's a really good photographer. A, a filmmaker. Good filmmaker, he's a filmmaker, filmmaker. and filmmaker. it's Alex. Alex, or Danis. Or Danis. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. And. Uh, your other daughters? My other daughter is uh, Christine. She became a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, she married an uh, uh, Englishman Canadian. He had a, 
he was a um, Fisher Price head of Asia, Fisher Price CEO. After she had the two kids, she never went back to school as a teacher because uh, he had a well to do. And Menka, she's the pure Macedonian. She married a guy, his last name was Kostopoulos. He went to change his name to Kostov. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm not going to let my kids uh, grow up in a, in, a, in a Greek name. So he changed it to double Kostov as a, from mm -hmm. Kostopoulos. And, and they have three kids, mm -hmm. and uh, one in the you know, his uh, school now is um, college, mm -hmm. and the daughter is 16 years old, and a little 11 years old. Mm -hmm. then, and Menka was involved also in the Macedonian program. Yeah, she was, Tell us she about was, that. Well, well Menka, uh, I think when you used to do it, she was, uh, who used to, uh, wasn't a Bill Bram, uh, that time, when he, she was hosting the Macedonia program for almost a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, the uh, now we've we've talked touched on a lot of things. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you think is important for us to touch on? Well, uh, uh, actually, you asked me what's the population. Probably, if you want to know about the uh, oh yes, with Banitsa, you said it was a very, uh, the, the strategic. Uh, you wanted to tell us that the strategic place where Banitsa was located was yeah. very important. Yes. Well, the Kaiser Banzo was more strategic because uh, all the wars, they, they stop, they have to go through Banzo. So regardless where they go, go solo or whatever, they have to pass through through the village. And, uh, and of course, the, the politics, uh, the, they, the, 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 the politics destroy my village, you know, because uh, communists or capitalists, you know, almost a quarter of the village left when like you say to the Yugoslavia, that time was Yugoslavia, now Republic of Macedonia, they left, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they could not come and see their loved ones uh, uh, for many, many, many and years. And you still have relatives in, in Macedonia, in yes, the Republic? Yes, yes. When I came here, and I say, I heard uh, there are some people in the United States, there are people in Czechoslovakia, there are people in uh, Bulgaria, there. so my wife and me in 1968, we went and rented a car in, the, in Paris, and I went to nine countries. The first I stopped in Czechoslovakia, where a professor of the University of Czechoslovakia is from our village. I went to see him in Athena because they are my people. It's uh, Boris Abuf, he was professor of Czechoslovakia. Then we have a doctor in Czechoslovakia, uh, in Brno, which is there. From there I went to Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, my grandma's sister, she left 1922. They never came to see each other, all that she died, and nobody knew where she was buried in, in, in Bulgaria. And then from there, we went to Turkey, and where the people who left 1920, 1921, they never went back to see. One of the sons actually he went back to Greece. So from Banitsa, people from left Banitsa. in 1920. That time, in the, in the war, in, yes. the, in the Asian war and everything like that. Uh, then I went to see my, my grandfather's son in uh, uh, Akron, Ohio, Canton, Ohio, I'm sorry, Canton, Ohio, because uh, then another person went to uh, um, uh, Tyrus, Indiana, which is, uh, and he says I left 1908, and uh, then I, like when I went to Republic, I'm, there is a picture of me there, uh, most Everybody from the from the Skopje, they came and said goodbye to me, and uh, mm -hmm. to, in 1968, we have a picture of them, thing like that. Because that time, like I said, they could not. Uh, I could bring some stuff uh, from from Banica to them, but then nobody like whiskey or rikia or a thing like that. But nobody will let them go through the thing. But then the borders open after in the 70s or 80s. But that time, nobody could come. Mm -hmm. And believe me, that was to me. My, a very close relative, uh, Dr. Malin. He was one of the best doctor in uh, Ohrid. Yes. And I went and met him, and uh, he, I stay in his place, and he tell me stories about what happened and how it happened and everything. Dr. Malin. Malin, yeah. And he's still in Ohrid. He was he, in Ohrid. Well, he, he was the head of the uh, this uh, hospital in Ohrid. And he was from Banica. From Banica. <laughs> his brother is in Banica. One of his brother. Mm -hmm. And he one is in a in a republic, uh -huh. 
And one of this uh, uh, brother-in-law, or the Mary, one of the daughters, the one that's in Banica, and I asked him when we got together, I said, where are you working? I said, I'm working in a, um, uh, in a Republic, uh, what they call uh, Skopje, in the Skopje. And, uh, I said, come on, cannot be Skopje, call him Macedonia. And I, I put the question, I said, how come you, your grandfather, your father-in-law is a Greek, and your uncle in the Republic is a uh, thing? I said, how come, how can, whether he will be a Greek, or your father-in-law will be a uh, Scorpion. And he, didn't know. and his his wife his wife says, Tell Uncle Paul said this guy that he married Scorpionists. Okay. <laughs> that's been, that's true. So 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 this is the problem what we get the between the Greeks and the, the they call us Scorpion and things like that. I said they're Macedonia, call them anything, but don't call them a Scorpion. Then then uh, believe me, the, I say I give him example. How can your uncle, which is in the, he left Banitsa in the 40s, he became, he was a doctor before he went there, and he, he will be a Scorpion, Scorpion so they call him, and your grandfather, your father now will be a Greek, and uh, you have to give him, the, but that's, that's how they believe, you cannot have. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, yeah. Now, uh, you, uh, Paul, you came from Banitsa to Canada a long time ago, yeah, yeah. and you have, uh, worked here really hard and uh, you know have have been part of the Masonian community absolutely uh, what has motivated you you know to help the artists to help the Canadian Macedonian plays what has motivated you to okay. to be a supporter and a to, part of the community okay this is again I'm talking uh, let's say from back home I support two families back home for 50 years tell us 50. about that well they're very poor Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't have uh, almost, an, uh, oh, for 50 years I didn't send them a lot, but for 50 years I didn't send I, I said, Some of our millionaires and stuff, they go back on things because I always like to help people because of my grandfather. My grandfather was a person, let's say you go to, to the farm and plowing. Somebody says, uh, Mr. Philip, uh, can you let the Mizoris Muitaniba? You know, I said, turn around, he goes to him and says, I said, Dedo, we're going to our place. It's okay, nice to, we'll go after there. And believe so me... you wanted to help people. Well, and I'm, believe me, I'm the same thing all my life. I'm not trying to uh, brag myself, but I always say I have a, I help so many people, mm -hmm. so many people. Mm -hmm. Even the guy in, in Poland, I say, I helped him for 25 years. I send him money and thing, but I keep it secretly mm -hmm. until his, uh, her, his father's wife dies here. Because if she knew the husband had a son in Poland, I don't know, thing like that. Soon as she passed away, then I told the, the sister, there were three sisters, you have a brother in Poland. And then they brought him here, they, the thing like that. Mm -hmm. So they brought the brother the, here after? No, they went for a visit. Uh -huh. Just for a visit. He's, he's back in Poland now. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, can you tell us what in Canada you have you know, lived through that you're really proud? My? <coughs> Canada, myself, was everything. Mm -hmm. I never could accomplish that much and I, I accomplished in now Canada. you got married here, right? I got okay. married here. With your wife, with, uh, with my wife. What date was that? Uh, it's uh, May, in May 1961. In 1961 you got married. Uh -huh. so, so you had a family like here? Like I said, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I'm not uh, again. I had a... Uh, um, the business where I got down and you know, a thing like that, I have a, I have a psychologist, she's still with me. Uh, the best psychologist in Ontario, she's my client, and I say, the only thing that's missing for me, education. You know what she said to me? She says, Paul, you have a, street, a university street education. <laughs> you know, and believe me, that's true. In, in, a, in a West where I work, all my, my, my client there was uh, um, business people. Um, uh, I put about 15 people working in the Queen's Park because I knew the driver of the MP, they stand upstairs in the, the headquarters of the Conservative Party. I put uh, 15, 16 people working because I knew the driver says, Paul, Zoran's going to come to think. Uh, and 
anything I needed, I, I could I could get that. And people they liked me so much. Uh, for fifth, for ten years I worked, and that was my best thing. I would never exchange with no doctor, no lawyer. Not this is my, in uh, when in you a Westbury Hotel, which is I worked downtown. And you met a lot of very influential, influ absolutely influential That's, people. Uh, open you. If I didn't have that job, probably it could be the same thing as a little villager I came from back home, and mm -hmm. I never. But that opened my my. Right. And, uh, and uh, uh, Paul, you are an example of a very successful Macedonian immigrant mm -hmm. who came to Canada and you were able to build a really meaningful life in this country. What advice do you have for the young generation here uh, who are, uh, you know, who are Macedonians and what advice do you have to, to be successful in Canada? Well, first of all, education and hard work. Like I myself, I'm a, probably, you know where I am, I'm 78 years old, I still work, I'm a workaholic, work doesn't kill me, and uh, like I said, the, the, best, the best thing is to be honest and, and hard to work, and believe me, I, you're not very well. Like my kids, my grandchildren, of course now, because we, we lost the kids, most of them we lost. What I'm thinking now in the, with the, uh, with the uh, social media, I have a 250 Facebook friends, mostly from uh, my village, Panitsa, Baby, whatever they call them. And I want to do a reunion of my people. That's your uh, my My, aim, my goal, goal, I think I wanted to do. The children, they have lots of intermarriage and stuff like that. And uh, even for one day, I'd like to have them do like that. And I'm thinking, uh, how are we going to do it? A picnic or thing like that? We can have people from Panitsa come. My nephew is a mayor in town. He likes to come. And you I like to have that reunion in Banitsa or no, here? No, no, here, here, here. Uh -huh. And we're going to have people from Australia, from whatever, whoever likes. And I'm going to open my house for a couple of couples if they want to stay in my house that mm -hmm. time. So I'm working now like that. But again, this then politics kill us. Mm -hmm. Politics is very a thing like that. If I have it in the uh, in the Macedonia church, I so I'm a Gakoman, I don't go to it. If you go in the Greek church because they have the they give you free, oh he's a Greek, you wouldn't go from there. And if you go in a hotel it's uh, cost you a lot of money to do a thing like that. But believe me, I'm gonna do something. That's my I'm gonna see what the people think in first. They click me yes or no. Mm -hmm. But uh, believe me, I I care about my people more than any of my, and I met, I met and I photographed more of my people and I spoke to them and if, uh, more than anybody else. I have uh, thousands of pictures and videos and interviews and uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. in the Republic of Macedonia, like in, a, in a Turkey or whatever, I, I always ask questions. I don't just sit down and let them think like that. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm, but like I said, success, hard work. Mm -hmm. Nasite. Well, na Makedonski, uh, što je važno? 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 Što je Thank you so much for you. being with us here at Canadian Masonic Historical Thanks. Society.